guys. Welcome to Chrome Air video channel and we're here today with Gina who just finished this nice artwork which done mostly with the Cratex uh, water-based candy colors which are pretty cool, the candy 2.0s. Uh, so the idea is uh, we took the aluminum base, everything sprayed with a spray gun and on top of that we just built up a few of the different, I think 7 or 8 Cratex uh, candy colors which made I think really nice effect. For, uh, for a bike, because all the colors you cannot see with this lighting here, but I have a special light which is gonna show all the details and we make some uh, close up look on this. So, Gina, tell us about what you used for this. For this work, I'm, I'm used this airbrush, it's a Chaos uh, Micron, I call this Micron, it's 0.19 uh, nozzle. It's my favorite airbrush right now. I do maybe 90% of my works <laughs> with this air airbrush. And I'm used this V-tape. Without V-tape, you cannot do things like that. As you can see, it's very sharp lines, very sharp edges. So if you, if you wanna do something uh, like this, you have to use V-tape. Exactly this one. It's my favorite too. It's working perfect. So next thing is a candy color, Createx. Uh, I'm working with uh, Createx uh, candy colors first time in my life. Before I'm working with uh, candies, but I'm used uh, solvent. It's uh, crazy yeah, solvent chemicals. Based. Yeah, solvent chemicals. Getting uh, highway yeah. paint. Yeah. Uh, this is my first uh, water-based paints. So what I can say, I'm so happy because it's easy to use. Um, it's very thin uh, pigment, so you can use even micron yeah, for this kind of paint. Yeah, it's brush, which really sensitive to any paint you put in there. Uh, yeah, this that's, that's important thing. You have to use the 4030 with uh, candy colors for two reasons. Mostly they spray better, and the second way, uh, the candy is kind of they build up. Because, like I said, you cannot see on this lighting, but we're going to show the cool little look on the daylight. This is the thing which builds up the candy, like like further away from the surface, which gives this deep effect of the color. And this is a cool product. Yeah, Jin fused using it first. I was insisting, but he's happy with it now. So, how do you feel about this uh, Creos airbrush? Oh, this airbrush feels perfect. It's very handle. So now it's my main choice. It's my favorite airbrush yeah, it's a good right now. Choice. Well, if you didn't know, the Creos they made in Japan. Japan, Japan, and I'm saying correctly. <laughs> 0.18 millimeter. They have a few different versions of airbrushes from 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.2 millimeters. All the all the different airbrushes, but this is the good for details, especially working with candy, which are really small pigment paints. And this is standard airbrush with a you know, gravity cap, all this stuff. But it's really well made, so I'm happy with this. Gene loves it and really recommend it for 200 bucks. It's it's a steal. This is a great airbrush. Following with the time lapse of this uh, of this artwork, how it's made with all the details, so we can see nothing hidden. But if you have any questions, any details, you know how to achieve this sum of colors and some results here, feel free to comment and uh, contact us. We're here to help. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye. All right, guys. So I'm going to be outlining roughly the process that we went through to create this finished product and some of the actual paint products that we used to achieve the details. Um, before we started any kind of sketching or getting the motorcycle outliner figure on the paint, we started with an aluminum base, a coarse base by Createx, and the idea on that is 4103. And what we did was we sprayed this across the whole panel to create a nice outer layer, which you'll notice if you see it in the finished product, it's that silver lining around the outside. So we did that first, and also really anytime you're using candy colors, you wanna lay down that priming layer, that first coat of the aluminum so that it brings out the translucent pearlescent color and that depth that we associate with candy. So the next step after that was obviously beginning the, the sketch of the, the motorcycle, which was done, it's not a literal sketch, but the airbrushing process in black. And um, once that shape was kind of outlined already, then we started focusing on the exhaust pipes. So we masked off the exhaust pipes and with tape and we sprayed it with a different metallic paint. We sprayed it with the Wicked Platinum, that's the 352 code 
and um, the goal here, the purpose was to make it stand out more from the aluminum base that we had already set in the background. So we wanted to give it a little bit of pop, a little twist, something to make it stand out more, which you'll see worked out pretty well. It looks like a shining mirror, those exhaust pipes. So we went back and started filling in all the rest of the spots that were missing with the motorcycle that hadn't already been detailed. So back to the black paint and focusing on, so after we had finished the actual exhaust pipes, we masked them all up so that they wouldn't get affected by the other paint work we had to do. And you notice that the wheel's obviously right behind the pipes. So we started focusing on the rims, the calipers, the bolts, the nuts, all these small things, obviously around the masked pipes. And so once all these little shapes and pieces of the motorcycle were completed, as far as their general outline of the skeleton of the motorcycle, we started to use the actual candy paints by Createx to build up the colors and really make them pop and stand out. Um, so wherever they fit, you see the red coloring of the motorcycle, some of the blue hues on the actual pipes, um, everything in between, That's that we did that last. That was all finishing detail work um, and bringing it really to where it needed to be as far as Gene's perspective on the colors. Something to keep in mind is when using the candy colors, you want to make sure to be using the Createx 4030 Intercoat because it really, it, it, there's a relationship between that and the candy colors to achieving the real depth. If you've ever seen candy on a canvas or on a work like this, you'll see that it almost looks like there's about a half inch to an inch of, of literal depth that looks like it's coming off of the actual canvas. And so that's that a candy effect where it looks like it has that depth perception. And using the intercoat is really crucial here with that. So we recommend definitely mixing it at least 50% of the paint with the Createx intercoat. Um, but obviously as necessary, that percentage could even go higher if needed. And you'll see in this little time lapse as well, some of the actual technical skills that Gene used as far as using sandpaper, a sand sponge, and his hobby blade to cut away at the fine edges and create those sharp lines. Detail work is really crucial here. Um, if you look around the edge of the wheel, the exhaust pipes, everything is very, very sharp, very fine detailed, and that's, that's achieved with the, the knife, the cutting knife, to make sure that you have the right edges. Um, and along the pipes is where we really use a lot of the sponge, the sandpaper, to, to drag out that reflective look to create that mirrored reflection. If you guys have any questions, if there's anything else you'd like for us to address for you, just drop a comment down below and uh, we'd be happy to get back to you and share how we achieved it.